Hello all and welcome to Wow Crochet yet again for another tutorial and my name is Mary and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to make this beautiful solid rectangle. <laughs> tiny huh? <laughs> it is tiny because I've got very short hands. So um, yeah you can make the rectangle any shape you like, uh, any shape, not shape, has to be a rectangle, any size you like. You could keep going. I didn't keep going. You can and you can keep going until whatever size you like. In the tutorial, I actually used 11 chains to go across um, and then I chained up five for the pattern. You can use any amount of chains you like. If you wanted to make it really big, you could start off with 20 chains, 30 chains, but always add those five chains at the end. Okay, that classifies a double crochet chain two, okay, for your corner. All right, um, what else can I tell you about it? I used this lovely gorgeous lovely yarn now here's a little trivia about this tutorial it took me and I'm not kidding this is a very short tutorial it took me nearly two hours to do only because and you're gonna laugh at this and I forgot to save them I kept deleting them I kept saying cotton gray wisp and I couldn't say it properly and I was and I was saying color grain wisp kind of may mist and I just went on and on and I just couldn't get it right but it is cotton gray wisp okay got it <laughs> so that's a little bit of trivia about this tutorial um, which should have been a very short one <laughs> but it took forever anyway so in the future we're going to be doing something with our uh, little um, um, dum 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 granny got a granny our little solid rectangle um, but for now we're just learning how to make it okay uh, so without further ado let's get started Okay, for the purpose of this tutorial, we are going to be using a 10 ply cotton from Bendigo Woolen Mills. It's called Grey Wisp. Okay, it calls for a 4.5 millimeter hook, which is this one. It's a clover. I think it's, I thought it was a clover soft touch, which I mentioned in another tutorial, but I think it's a clover armor. Okay, and there is your gorgeous scissors if you have them. You do need them, by the way. And yes, you will need your pesky darning sewing and weaving needle, which we hate doing. <laughs> well, I do anyway. <laughs> I detest weaving. <laughs> One of my worst things to do. Okay, you will need to know how to do chains, slip stitch and double crochet. Basic stitches, a little bit fiddly, the first row, um, but after that, the rest is basic. Okay, um, if you are aware of these, unaware of these stitches, you can actually check out my description box down below there. Um, I have tutorials for all those stitches. Go away, have practice, come back to us. Otherwise, stick with us. I don't go too fast, so um, you know I explain everything word from word. So we should be going. Okay, first thing we're going to do is a slip knot. That is yarn your tail end over your finger once, your tail end over your finger twice. Hold it there. Pass. The first, the, the back one, halfway. Pass the next one all the way. Be careful not to drop the stitch. Pop your hook in and give it a tuck. All right. So we are chaining 11. One, yarn over hook. Two, yarn over hook. Three. Oh, sorry, I should get a nice close up for you so you can see it. Yarn over hook. Four, yarn over hook. Five, and then six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. Now we're working on those eleven stitches, so we need to chain up another five. It's a foundation chain. So one, two, three, four, five. And your first double crochet is yarn over hook. It goes into the sixth chain from your hook. So it's one, two, three four, five, six. So your first double crochet, just put it through one loop only. Okay, yarn over hook, pull up a loop. You should have three loops on your hook. Yarn over hook, pull through two. Yarn over hook, pull through the last two. Okay, and now we're going to put another double crochet in that stitch right there. Okay. I just want to check my stitches now. So one, well it spiraled a bit. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Beautiful. So what we need to do is we need to put a double crochet in each stitch all the way across nine times, okay? But only in one of the, the loops, not all of them. So a double crochet in there, 
double crochet you saw before it was yarn over hook pop it in your next stitch right there yarn over hook pull up a loop yarn over hook pull through two yarn over hook pull through the last two and we're going to do that again in the next stitch yarn over hook pop it in your stitch yarn over hook pull up a loop yarn over hook pull through two yarn over hook pull through the last two okay very simple so far we're just going to keep doing that and remember we have to do it um, all together nine times that's not including our first two chains that we've done our first two chains our first two double crochets in that stitch that first stitch and then you do a single double I keep saying single one double crochet I keep saying single in every tutorial it drives me batty uh, one double crochet in every stitch nine stitches in a row okay so that's I think we're up to our eighth I could be wrong I haven't been counting naughty me <laughs> I should have counted all right let's have a look I'm pretty sure we've got nine so one two three four five six seven eight nine and there's your two we started with all right easy peasy lemon squeezy all right so we are going to put in our last stitch we are going to put two double crochets in there now this is going to be um, very full so put it through both the loops okay so two double crochets in there one and two Yep. and then we chain two for a corner that's one corner we're doing so far and now we're going to put in the same stitch three double crochet it's going to get very crowded in this stitch one two and tight <laughs> and three you might find this stitch will loosen up because it's the very first stitch and you may notice I'm actually crocheting over the tail okay so chain two again one two so you've done two double crochets chain two three double crochets chain two and now we're going to do two double crochets we have just formed two corners okay one and two all right you can drop that stitch if you want now that's going to be the front of your work and that's going to be the back all right so now you're going to put as you did before nine double crochets all the way along there so remember that that is actually a stitch there so be careful don't miss it so with this one you put it in you be careful because cotton can actually split and i think that's what's happening here you know let's get a nice close-up so i can see what i'm doing <laughs> how's that it's almost like a magnifying glass isn't it see that stitch right there You do your double crochet in there. I've split it again. No, I haven't. Good. Good. No split. <laughs> Put one double crochet in there. And one double crochet in there. It does look like it's split, doesn't it? Let's have a quick look at it again. It's not there. One double crochet in there. And all the way across. And we're going to count it at the end because I've been talking and I lost count. So when we get to the end, we're going to count. Um, the foundation row is really important that you don't miss up count or it'll bring your rectangle all out of shape if you do so yours truly is a bit of a chatterbox and lost count chatter 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 that's what I do oh, if I can get it in that there we go I think that was the last stitch but we'll have a look in a minute so there's our the first stitch we started which is right there one oh did I miss a stitch it looks like I didn't two three four five six seven eight and we've got one more to do right there in a minute okay eight and nine and then in this one here right there with all the doubles you put two double crochets in there one two chain two and then ordinarily you would put uh, we're still doing it chain two we're putting another two double crochets in there one two and I'll tell you what we're doing in a minute yes 
and then we are slip stitching onto that very first well we're going to be careful where we slip stitch now okay because this is you know how we had before we had two chain two three chain two two well that's what we're going to do here two chain two three chain two two so we're going to count one two and pop your double crochet actually it's more than there so it's one two and pop your double crochet in there so you've got your two chains okay so first we in other words we're just skipping those two chains and we're popping it in there all right and there you go so there's your two double crochets three chain two three double crochets chain two and then two double crochets a little bit wonky <laughs> to begin with but it's only because it's the first row okay okay one two three four five I'm just counting up my stitches you need to count up five chain one two three four and five and then we put two double crochets in there right there one yes in the space two okay and now you just put a double crochet in every stitch across easy yeah the first row or the foundation row this part here these two rows here it's classified as one row by the way um, was very difficult because it was a start now we are going to fly through this um, and if you're faster than me go for it <laughs> <clears throat> So I still have this nasty summer cold. I mean, who has a cold in summer? Um, the voice comes and goes when it feels like it, of course. Um, and, you know, it has to come out this cold because I'm on holidays. So every time I'm on holidays from work, <laughs> I end up with this nasty cold or a nasty sickness or something breaks down or I lose something, that sort of thing. So, yeah, I call myself a holiday curse. Every time I'm on <laughs> holidays, things like that happen. So we're getting to the end. This is our last double crochet before the end. We're going to count these double crochets to make sure we got that row done right. But before we do, I'm going to count here. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Okay. So initially, what we have here, all the way across it should be 17, but that's including two in there, which I haven't put yet. So we should actually have, oops, 15 of these. So one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and we're going to put two more in that space see that space right there we're going to put two in there two double crochets in there that's 16 and that's 17 all right now we're going to form that corner again which is chain two one and two this is easy and then two double crochets in the same space See the row we're doing now? All you need to do, once this row is done, is repeat it over and over and over and over and over again until you get to the size rectangle that you want. Now, we need to put a double crochet in each one of these double crochets. Okay, so one. Don't skip that one. A lot of people skip it and then go straight into there. No, you've got to go into that one right there. Double crochet there. Double crochet there. And double crochet in that one there. So initially you should have one, two, three, four, five. So we've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, why have we got six? Okay, where have we gone wrong? Let's have a look. Oh, I see, it's counting that, um, that next one in there. My apologies, yep. So one, two, three, four, five. And then two in there, yeah. Hello, sorry about that. So now we've got the five across there. We're going to put two in there. One and two. It's really actually three in there with a two on either side. Does that make any sense? Two on either side. Okay. Chain two, one and two. And two more in there. Two. Now this, even here, you've got to be careful. Don't just jump into that stitch. There is a stitch right there. 
okay double crochet into there if you don't go in there you put your count off and actually your work can look a little bit out of shape and wonky and everything else this is going to be our last row okay but you, you with this rectangle you can just keep going until your desired length you can make anything you want this is a great um, piece for a doily um, it's a great piece for the base of a bag um, when I say a bag I mean you know a little handbag and basket bags things like that that you need that you would like to make for yourself and carry your sun stuff in your beachwear and whatever else in because cotton is great when um, heading off to the beach uh, what else can I say what else can we do with our rectangle you make it big enough you can make them as front pieces for a vest which I do often okay let's put a double crochet in that last stitch there now this is a little bit fiddly here again but this is the same thing you're going to do for every round from now on so you put two double crochets in that space one and two okay now you chain two which is one and two and you put another two double crochets there one and two and then don't forget this little space right here you need to put a double crochet in there which is one and two and just wait there for a minute I want to check the pattern on this one so you've got two there you've got one two one more on the top of that three yeah so one and two we're going to put one more right there okay so you've got one, two, three, four, five. That's one, two, three, four, five. Now we need to put one last double crochet, which actually is a matching double crochet for that. Oh, sorry, I made a frame there. So another double crochet needs to go, but it goes into that space right there. Okay. One, two. And then, remember before, we left two stitches there and we slip stitched so it's one two and three it's a bit fiddly okay slip stitched into that and that is your rectangle oh, a little bit wonky just because of my tight and loose crocheting but there you go okay all right so we got to this stage we yours truly <laughs> has forgotten to finish off hasn't i hello wake up mary here we go so we Pull a loop through, we get our trusty scissors and we uh, cut right there and we find our sewing, darning, weaving needle, whichever you want to call it and we thread however you like to thread a needle, doesn't matter. Now remember how we crocheted over this bottom um, thread? We are going to go back in there. Oh, thread is so hard to weave in. And we are going to pull it through. Working with yarns a lot easier when weaving. So if, even though I dislike weaving in, I hate this, actually literally hate weaving in cotton. <laughs> More than wool. But don't say that too loud, yeah? <laughs> we don't want the cotton to know. Okay, just check. Make sure you're not um, coming through. But yeah, that's gone around once. Now, we're going to go back the other way. Don't forget, we've already crocheted over it once. So now we're going to sew it the third time. So we've sewn it the second time, and now we're sewing it the third time. Does that make any sense? We're crocheting once. I keep coming out of frame. I do apologise, guys. And there you go. Now, you can get your trusty scissors and cut. Be careful not to cut your piece. And the front of it looks gorgeous. Not too worried about the base. It still looks okay. Okay. Now we have another thread to get rid of. Mm -hmm. We've woven in that end. I mean, we've uh, threaded that end. Okay. Now with this one, because it's the very, very top one, we really don't want it to be noticed, do we? We don't want it to be noticed. So we are going to turn it over and... Weave it in anywhere you like that goes to the back. Now the front of the crochet 
is gorgeous and looks nice and neat. The back looks kind of jagged and bubbly. And also you can tell the front by the way it's facing you. Those little V looking stitches are facing your facing you here. But if you turn it that way, they're kind of facing back. All right, so it's the V's you, you need to see to show you the front. So if you see those V's in front, you turn it, and that's where you're going to weave your ending at the back. Now, you weave it in anywhere. Let's blow it up a bit so you can see. Anywhere you like, okay? Yours truly does a naughty and likes to split the yarn when weaving. Now, the reason I do that is so it's not noticed, noticeable that you're weaving. Sadly, with thread, especially 10-ply, it's very noticeable. But I'm trying to hide that end as best I can. But when you get down to here... And don't pull it too tight, otherwise the whole thing will go like that. So it'll loosen that up a bit. You just weave it in and out of that section there. In and out of those threads right there. Can you see it at the back? Oh, a little bit. Pull that out. Try it again. We don't want it to be noticeable. Ah, that's better. It's for all the thicknesses. Again, don't pull it too tight. Now you're going to go back the other way in a different direction, of course, because you don't want to unravel what you just... It's really hard to thread cotton, I tell you. <laughs> and you know what I've noticed? I have. I don't have a sewing needle. What I have is a darning needle. And a darning needle, the difference between a sewing and a darning needle, is that that's quite a flat edge. You put your finger on, you're not going to, it's not going to hurt you at all. It's very flat. A sewing needle is better to use with cotton because cotton is oh, it so uh, splits all over the place. It's thick, especially this size ten yarn. You know, it's ten ply. It's uh, uh, quite annoying. You need to use a normal sewing needle and not a darning needle. It's a bit of a, a tip there. Now, that is your gorgeous uh, rectangle. Um, what can you use your rectangle for? I don't know. Um, you can use it as doilies. Um, you just need to wash it and pop it all into place though, not make it nice and neat so it all fits into place. Um, you can use it as a doily, you can use it as the, what we've been using for lately in the theme of making soap holders, okay? Make a, another round and you've got yourself a soap holder, the one at the top you end up using a little thread in between there, you put your thread in there. I'll be doing a tutorial on it so I'm not worried too much about it. And then you pull it shut, okay? So then you have that top bit out there and the bottom bit stuck, stuck, stuck to the other side. When we do our tutorial, you'll know what I mean. Um, but for now, we're just doing the um, solid granny rectangle to show you how to make them. The next tutorial we'll be doing is the solid granny rectangle soap holder. Okay. So what it is, is we put our soap in there. It's kind of like a soap buffer. You put your soap in there, you've got your two pieces, you sew them together, you put your soap in, you tie it up here, and when you're having a shower or something, you're rubbing it on your skin. And for those of you who are like me, who have psoriasis um, and things like that, and eczema and whatever, the Bendigo Woolen Mills cotton is the best cotton to use because it is a soft cotton. I'm sure there are nice soft ones out there, but a lot of people for the soap bags tend to use the harsh cotton because it takes off a lot of the dead skin. I get what they're doing it for. But for those of you who have sensitive skin like me, use the Bendigo Woolen Mills cotton. It's simply gorgeous, okay? Or any soft cotton that that matter, okay? So I don't know what else to say, except here is your solid granny, not granny, here is your solid rectangle. Hello. <laughs> um, by the way, the solid granny square can be located, solid granny rectangle, can be located in the links below. This is... Oh, gosh, I'm messing it up. The solid, <laughs> the granny rectangle, hello, <laughs> can be found in the links below. And the solid granny rectangle is the one we've done today. <sighs> I think I got that right and probably didn't in the end. It doesn't matter. Anyway, <laughs> thanks for watching. Don't forget to click like if you liked the tutorial. If you didn't like it, just, just walk away. Um, <laughs> and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, click the little bell button so you can receive further tutorials. Happy crocheting to you and ciao for now.